welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 8th, 1944, and the title is Annie Oakley. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. Dust in a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the lone ranger meets Annie Oakley. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! It was during the summer of 1875 that a personable young man arrived in Cincinnati, Ohio. The purpose of his visit was to give an exhibition of expert rifle shooting at the local opera house. A few days before the engagement was scheduled to open... He stood in front of the theater talking to one of his best friends, a hotel keeper. There. Read that playbill posted in the lobby and maybe you'll understand what I mean. Playbill? <laughs> but, Frank, I don't oh, see I'm anything... Read it. I don't see anything different, Frank. It says, coming next Tuesday, Frank Butler, world-famous marksman and rifle shot. Interesting and educational entertainment. A dazzling display of dexterous marksmanship. Scintillating. Oh, skip all that. What I'm talking about is printed in smaller letters at the bottom of the poster. Oh, I see. You mean, to prove his claim to the title of champion, Mr. Butler challenges all comers in a rifle shooting contest to be held at the fairgrounds next Tuesday morning. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Except so far, there aren't any challenges. Nobody wants to shoot against me. <laughs> Evidently, your reputation is so good, all of our local nimrods are afraid of a contest with Frank Butler. <laughs> mm, that may be a compliment, but it's bad for business. If I can only arrange a contest, it'll mean bigger crowds here at the theater. <laughs> Sorry, Frank, I don't handle a rifle myself. <laughs> and I don't know of a soul who'd stand a chance against you. Unless... What? There's a girl who lives over in Dock County. I've never seen her, a but... A girl? I buy wild game from her. She's been shipping geese, ducks to the hotel kitchen for almost a year. What makes you think she can shoot? Every bird that comes in is shot clean. One bullet right through the head. Well, I suppose some of these country hunters become pretty accurate, but... <laughs> the more I think of the idea, the better it is. Frank, I'll bet that girl would give you a run for your money. You know, there's a lot of difference between hunting wild game and contest shooting. Haven't you been complaining because there's no one to shoot against you? 
Yes, but a girl would hardly be Tell the one to... Tell you what I'll to... do. I'll send for her. If she'll come up here, I'll lay a hundred dollar side bet that she equals your score. A <laughs> hundred dollars? Isn't that quite a bit of confidence in someone you've never seen? <laughs> I've seen evidence of how she handles a rifle. Want to take the bet? <laughs> sure, why not? Bring this modern Diana out to the fairgrounds next Tuesday morning. If she'll come to Cincinnati, we'll be there. Now, quiet down, folks. I see Mr. Butler's just arrived. So as soon as he's ready, the contest will begin. Uh, pray. Hey, well, there you are. <laughs> Say, where'd all this crowd come from? I've been doing quite a bit of talking down at the hotel. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, did the girl that you... Sure, were... she's here. Came in town with her brother early this morning. Uh, come on over, I'll introduce you. <laughs> Frank, I'd like you to meet Miss Annie Oakley. How do you do? How, How do you do, sir? Um, have you uh, Have you ever done any professional rifle shooting, Miss Oakley? Well, no, I haven't. I... Oh, don't worry. The main thing we want to do is give these folks a little free show. Do you understand? I'm, I'm not sure that I do, Mr. Butler. I'll go get my right. <laughs> well, Frank, what do you think? Annie Oakley. I like her name. But she acts frightened and nervous. Naturally, she's scared. Beating the great Frank Butler in front of all these people. Bet she won't be nervous when the shooting starts. I hope not. She, um... She's a very beautiful girl. <laughs> Don't let that make you forget our hundred dollar side bet. <laughs> I won't. I'm ready. Oh, good. Now, just as soon Got as the we birds get ready, started. Joe. All set. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we'll shoot from right here, Miss Oakley. The boy will release the birds at the end of the field, and we'll take alternate shots. Do you understand? I think so. All right. Um. Pull. Uh, go on, Miss Oakley. It's your turn. I. Cincinnati talked about that shooting match for years. How Frank Butler and a little country girl from Dark County matched shot for shot for almost two hours. Then, as the contest neared its end, Annie Oakley forged ahead. Her last shot made her the winner. Paul! <laughs> Frank! Frank! I've been keeping score! Do you know what's happened? Of course I know, Miss Oakley. I congratulate I, you. I really <laughs> didn't expect to win against you, Mr. Butler. Oh, nonsense. It was the finest shooting I've ever seen. <laughs> Don't forget our side bet, Frank. <laughs> I won't, but right now I want to ask the winner if she'll have lunch with the loser. How about it, Miss Oakley? Well, I, I'd love to. Good. <laughs> I, I've been beaten before, but this is the first time I've ever really enjoyed it. Come on. Frank Butler's defeat that day in Cincinnati served a threefold purpose. It brought a modest yet courageous young girl from the obscurity of an Ohio farm and started her on the road to fame. It introduced Butler to his future wife. He and Annie Oakley were married a short time later. And it created a deep impression in the mind of a grave-faced Indian who'd witnessed the shooting match. In their camp that evening, Tonto told the Lone Ranger all about it. Me see plenty people shoot rifle. Never see one shoot good as Annie Oakley. Annie Oakley, huh? Ah. The girl must be an excellent shot if she impressed you that much. That's right. A match score like you've been talking about is unusual, even among professional marksmen. Ah. Every time girls shoot, crowd like it. Make heap big noise. That kind of shooting would attract attention any place. It's a shame that people all over the country can't see how the... Tonto. Ah. Remember when we saw Bill Cody in North Platte a few weeks ago? Ah. He's finished his job as buffalo hunter for the railroad, and he's going to organize a traveling show. Me not savvy. A Wild West show. He'll have a lot of people perform in a big tent. Cowboys, bronco busters, and all kinds of trick riders. He'll reproduce the actual way of life out west today. And there'll be Indians with his show, too. Kiowas, Cheyennes, and Sioux. 
Me think that make plenty trouble. No, I'm sure Colonel Cody can handle it all right. But I think he'd like to know about this girl, Annie Oakley. Ah. We're heading west first thing in the morning. I'll tell Bill about her the minute we see him. In the meantime, in a small western town not far from North Platte, two other men were also interested in Buffalo Bill's new traveling show. Yeah, it don't make sense to me, Wade. Why should we hire out as a couple of dude cowhands with Cody's show? If I want to go back to punching cows... Shut up. Well, I still don't... Don't worry, Mitch. I'll do all the thinking. Well, ain't we doing all right out here? It was 500 in that stagecoach job we pulled last week. Now, listen. Bill Cody's going to take his show all over the country, see? Thousands of people are going to see it. But what does that... It's going to pay money to see it. The colonel's got to carry that money with him. Oh. You mean... There'll be all over 500 cowpokes and engines with the show. You and me will be among those present. Yeah. But when do you figure... I don't know. All you have to do is play cowboy till I tell you something different. All right. When do we join up? Today. But we'll wait a few months till after the show's played some big towns and gets down south. Before we tap the strong box. Annie Oakley and her husband were touring vaudeville theaters in the east... Their act was a huge success. Audiences everywhere applauded the quiet yet self-assured young lady who displayed such amazing ability with a rifle. Thank you. Thank you so much. As usual, honey, you were wonderful. Oh, Frank, I know I'd never be able to do it if I couldn't see you standing here in the wings all the time. I wish you'd come out there, too, and Oh, show... not on your life. You think I want to give up my job as husband of the best rifle shot in the world to become an actor? Oh, but, Frank... Come I'm... on down to the dressing room. I've got great news. What is it? A telegram. Listen. Mr. and Mrs. Frank Butler, will Annie Oakley accept a job as the premier attraction with the world's greatest Wild West show? If the answer is yes, join us in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, Frank. And guess who signed it? Colonel William F. Cody, Buffalo Bill. Oh, that's wonderful, Frank. Are we going? You bet your life we are. I've already bought tickets for Louisville. <laughs> Operating a Wild West show was a big job. A job that Buffalo Bill wouldn't have attempted without the help of his old friend and manager, Nate Salisbury. They were in Bill Cody's dressing tent after their first evening's performance in Louisville. Nate, did you tell the stock tenders to be sure all the horses got plenty of water? And that sitting bull in this tribe had plenty of room to pitch their camp? Sure, everything's taken care of, Bill. Good. And here's tonight's receipts. Well, we're doing a land office business here in the South. Here, better get this under lock and key as quick as you can. I don't like to have it around. <laughs> Shucks, Nate, I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have you to worry for me. I'll lock it in the trunk. If you'd only get it through your head, Bill, that in many ways these big towns are a lot more dangerous than the country out west. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, has there been an Indian around the tent asking for me? Indian? We've got about 200 Cheyennes, Kiowas, Sioux... No, Sioux's, no, I don't mean one of our Indians. This one's a special friend of mine. He's a part of one of the best friends I've got. His name is Tonto... All right, gents. Get your claws up, both of you. Hey, what the... Hand over that money bag, Cody. And open the trunk. I'm taking the rest of it. I'll dog my cats. A road agent wearing a black mask. I thought I'd seen the last of buzzers like you. Shut up. Le... I've got you both covered. Open that trunk. <laughs> Oh, I'll leave the horses here, Tonto, and walk to Colonel Cody's tent. Oh. I don't think my mask will attract any attention as long as we stay in the dark. Come on. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Unaware that their arrival was ill-timed, Annie Oakley and her husband were also hurrying toward Buffalo Bill's tent. My goodness! I've never seen so many cowboys and Indians and horses in all my life. <laughs> it's a large outfit, Annie. There isn't a bigger show in the country. Mm-hmm. Which tent did the cowboy tell us was Colonel Cody? Uh, the last one on the right. Oh. That must be it up ahead there. heard me. Either open that trunk or I'll drill you both nobody and myself. I, a dirty sneaking no, coyote. Bill, let him have the money. It isn't worth risking our lives. I'm not going to stand Colonel it. Colonel Cody. What the? Who's that? I don't know. Colonel Cody? Is this Colonel Cody's tent? Quick, you. Hand me the lantern. I'll stand back in the light. Hurry or I'll well, blast you. Here, here it is. Now, whoever the woman is, tell her to come in. Both of you keep your hands Colonel up around. Colonel Cody? Yes, yes. Come on in. Oh, we weren't quite sure. Pray some this... folks. I'll do the talking here. Oh, what is this? Now, uh, hold up. You can see this buzzard has Nate and me, all of us, under a cold drop. I... I... Well, you must be Annie Oakley, and he's Frank Butler. Yes, Shut Frank. up. Get that trunk open, Cody, and do it fast. Go on, Bill. Has no sense. Bill. Oh, Bill. Say, what kind That's of a... That's one voice I'm really glad to hear. Come on in and come a-shoot. Boy, you took the trouble, Bill. Man. Another outlaw. Drop that gun or I'll... Without any light, you won't. He broke the lantern. What's up? Down. Keep down, all of you. Oh, who's He's getting out the back. Ah, the sidewinder made it. He got away. Oh, wait, here's another lantern. I'll strike a light. It was too dangerous to risk much gunfire in quarters as close as this. Who was he, Bill? Just some galoot with a mask. Never saw him before. Bill, who's this man? Otto's waiting for me outside. We'll try to trail him. See you later, Bill. Well, talk about an exciting reception to a new job. I never expected anything like this. I'm sorry, Miss Oakley. Something I didn't figure on, you can bet on that. Who is he? That man who just left. Friend of mine. Well, look, Nate, the hold-up gent dropped our money bag. All you folks dropping in at the same time must have rattled him. It was too fast for me to understand. It's all over now. Let's forget it. Nate, show Miss Annie and her husband to their dressing tent. Yes, I'll, uh... Bill, that tall fellow with a mask said someone named Tonto was waiting for him. Is that the same Tonto you were asking me about? Don't worry about it. I'll explain everything later. Well, good night, folks. Rehearsal's at 10 o'clock in the morning. Good night, Colonel. My, I knew I was joining a Wild West show, but I didn't think the performance went on 24 hours a day. <laughs> Dog my cats, Miss Annie, you're all right. Any girl who can joke about flying wet belongs in my show. <laughs> I'm alone this time. No hold-up gents around. At least ways I hope there isn't. Tonto and I lost his trail. Oh, I wish I... Well, hello, Tonto. How? He ran across the lot and disappeared near the tents where your cowboys are bunked. Hmm. Must have been some floater that figured on an easy haul. Well, all I can do is keep my eyes peeled. I sure want to thank you and Tonto for busting in when you did. Oh, forget it. Oh, that was Annie Oakley and her husband here with us. I took your advice and sent for her. Good. I've never seen her shoot, but I'll take Tonto's word that there isn't a woman alive who's any better. Got plenty of nerve, too. She proved that when the ruckus was going on in here tonight. Uh, which way is the show heading, Bill? West. Over into Arkansas, then Texas. Sure wish you could see it. I intend to. Tonto and I are going the same way. 
We'll tell you. What happened, Wade? I heard some shooting. Quiet. Just... Keep your voice down. We gotta get back into that bunk tent without being seen. Did you get away with it? You don't see me packing any money back, do you? Uh, did Cody throw down on you? Uh, everything was working out all right till some old hoot busted in on us. He did the shooting. Almost drilled me. Old hoot. Who was it? I don't know. I think Cody knows him. He and our redskin took out after me. But I lost him on the way over here. Well, maybe we'd better forget about this thing, Wade. If Cody's got outlaw parts hanging around... We won't out. forget nothing. The only thing to do is lay low. Wait for another chance. Come on, let's hit the hay. The following morning marked an important milestone in the career of Annie Oakley. <clears throat> Colonel Cody assembled his entire show troop, hundreds of Indians dressed in brilliant blankets and feathers, and an equal number of cowboys and shafts and sombreros formed a huge semicircle as Buffalo Bill signaled for a bugle call. Boys! Boys, I've got a mighty important announcement to make. Standing right beside me here is a little missy whose name is Annie Oakley. She's joining our show. She'll be the only white woman with us. I want you boys to welcome and protect her. How about it, cowpokes? All right. What do you redskins say? (laughs) Well, there, little missy, whether you say it in Indian or cowboy lingo means we're mighty proud to have you with us. Not half as proud as I am, Colonel. And so it was that Annie Oakley became the beloved little missy of the greatest Wild West show the world has ever seen. Her uncanny accuracy with the rifle was nothing short of miraculous. It never failed to thrill the ever-increasing crowds that flocked to see her. She coolly proceeded to demonstrate her unique skill. Annie Oakley shot down coins tossed into the air a hundred feet away and broke marbles on the fly. She exploded cartridges in midair, and Buffalo Bill threw them over his head four at a time. And she shot the spots out of a playing card, a tray of hearts, while he held it an inch from his face. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as final and conclusive proof of Miss Oakley's marksmanship, I'll toss an entire deck of playing cards into the air. Using one bullet from each of five rifles, Annie Oakley will shoot down five of those cards. And I wish to add this important fact. As the cards fall among you, anyone fortunate enough to secure any one of the five containing a bullet hole, may use it as a free pass to any succeeding performance. Ready, Annie? Ready. Here they go. Of course, no one in Buffalo Bill's show knew that several times during their tour through Texas... The Lone Ranger, disguised as a cowboy and accompanied by Tonto, had seen their performance. There's no doubt about it, Tonto. Annie Oakley is one of the best rifle shots in the country. Ah. Some of those tricks are very difficult tonight. What matter? Those two men on the top row behind us. Listen. Now this is a spot to work from right here tomorrow afternoon. Don't forget it. Oh, I won't wait. I'll be here. And if the sun's shining like it is today... Shut up. We'll do our talking in private. Those men are with the show, Tonto. They have no business up here in the seats. Mm. They're leaving now. There's something wrong. All of them, Tonto. I'll meet you at the camp. Uh, me do it. There's nobody in the cook tent. Come on, we'll duck in here. You uh, think this scheme of yours will work? It will if you do what you're supposed to. Well, I don't know. That Annie Oakley's an awful good shot. Nobody's a good shot with the sun in their eyes. 
All you have to do tomorrow afternoon is go up in those seats where we were today. Take a mirror with you. Well, does she always stand in the same place when she does that trick? Sure, with her back to the sun. Now you wait till she starts to shoot the tray of hearts out of Cody's hand. Then hold up the mirror and flash the sun right in her eyes. Well, maybe it'll show the shot the other way instead of at Cody's. Uh, ten to one, it won't. We'll drill him right in the head. That'll cause a big hullabaloo, and while it's going on, I'll get the money out of the ticket wagon. Wait. Look at that shadow on the other side of the tent wall. Maybe it's... Ah, no, it's nothing but an engine. One of sitting bulls, Redskins. They can't talk United States, let alone understand it. Well, Nate, how's the business end of our show coming along? Couldn't be better, Bill. The only bad part is carrying so much cash around with us. I'll feel safer when we get into Fort Worth and bank some of it. <laughs> uh, and you won't have anything to worry about, Nate. Say, um... What do you think of my idea of letting people in free if they pick up one of those cards Annie shoots a hole through? It's a good stunt, and it's causing a lot to talk. Yeah. Won't be long before any kind of a card or ticket with a hole in it will be called an Annie Oakley. Well, I wish you had more tricks like that instead of the one where she shoots the spots out of the tray of hearts. That's dangerous, Bill. Why, a half inch each way. That's what I like about you, Nate. You do all my worrying for me. That night, Tonto told the Lone Ranger what he'd overheard. And they made plans to meet the emergency. The following afternoon, when Annie Oakley and Bill Cody were in the center of the huge arena, the Lone Ranger was well hidden behind one of the canvas walls. His eyes never left the figure of a man seated on the top row of the spectator seats. A man who faced the sun with a mirror in his hand. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice that I hold in my hand an ordinary playing card. The tray of hearts. As I bring it close to within one inch of my face, Annie Oakley will shoot out all three hearts. Ready, Annie? Ready. Oh, I... Look! I... The sun's hitting her right in the eye! You're all talking so fast, I still don't know what happened. I almost killed Colonel Cody. It wouldn't have been your fault, little Missy. Yes, but I... Oh, every time I think of it, I shudder. Well, the first thing I knew was when this Tonto friend of yours, Bill, brought the sheriff to the ticket wagon. Then, a few minutes later, Way, Way Duncan tried to hold me up. The sheriff collared him and took him to jail. Yeah. And he got Mitchell, too. He was a pool cat that tried to blind little Missy with a looking glass. Well, you said someone saw what was happening and shot him just in time. Who did that? Yes, Colonel. I wanted to ask the same question, but I've been so excited. Tell the truth, folks. I I don't know for sure. But I'll bet my life it was the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.